to the Middle East now, where the Israeli military say its soldiers have rescued a hostage in the southern Gaza Strip. The 50-year-old man from Rahat, who's been named as Qaid Farhan al-Qadi, was abducted by Hamas on October the 7th. He's said to be in a stable medical condition and has been transferred to hospital for checks. Today, Israeli special forces successfully rescued one of our hostages from Hamas captivity in Gaza. During a complex rescue mission, Qaid Farhan al Qadi from the Bedouin community of Rat, who was kidnapped from Israel by Hamas terrorists during their massacre on October 7th, has been rescued. He is alive. He is back home in Israel. We cannot go into many details of this special operation, but I can share that Israeli commandos rescued Qaid Farhan al Qadi from an underground tunnel following accurate intelligence. His medical condition is stable and he will undergo examination in hospital. His family had been waiting 326 days to receive the news they did today. But there are still 108 hostages whose families are still waiting to hear news that their loved ones are home. And they should know that we will not rest. We will not rest until we fulfill our mission to bring all our hostages back home. We will pursue the return of our hostages through all means possible. I repeat, through all means possible. Welcome home, Farhan al Qadi. I congratulate the IDF and Shin Bet on another successful liberation operation. We work tirelessly to return all of our hostages. We do this in two main ways, through negotiations and liberation, rescue, operations. Both ways together require our military presence in the field and unceasing military pressure on Hamas. We will continue to act like this until we bring everyone home. Well, in another development, the United Nations says the humanitarian work in Gaza has been dealt a serious blow by Israel's new evacuation orders. UN aid workers have been fleeing their operation centers in the besieged strip, leaving behind mm -hmm. essential life-saving equipment. The order came as the UN was set to begin its mass vaccination program after the first case of polio in 25 years in Gaza. UN officials say there is a desperate lack of safe zones in the territory and people have nowhere to go to find safety. They say there's very limited access to humanitarian resources because humanitarian operations are also being displaced within these evacuation orders. Humanitarian colleagues on the ground are particularly worried about the order issued uh, Sunday for a part of their Albala. It affected 15 premises hosting UN and NGO aid workers, four UN warehouses, Al Aqsa Hospital, two clinics, three wells, one water reservoir, and one desalination plant. All of these are either in or near the designated area. The sum of this is that it effectively upends a whole life-saving humanitarian hub that was set up in Deir al-Bala after its earlier evacuation from Rafa back in May, from moved again. And that, of course, severely impacts our ability to deliver essential support and services. I want to remind you that only 11% of the territory of the Gaza Strip is not under evacuation orders. 11%. Well, for the very latest, let's cross live now to Tel Aviv and speak with Arise special correspondent Carl Bostic. Uh, thank you very much indeed for joining us, uh, Carl. First to the news that one of the Israeli hostages held in Gaza has been rescued. Uh, who is he and how was he rescued? 
Charles, good evening. Yes, uh, Farhan uh, Al Qadi, a very dramatic rescue with a lot of firsts, if you will. And this happened uh, early this Tuesday morning, and uh, it's quite a, almost astonishing about what happened. Um, he's the first hostage to be rescued alive uh, from a from a tunnel, and he's he's the first hostage uh, who's Arab. He's a Bedouin, a Muslim, and he's Arab. That's that that's a first. And uh, at the same time, he was a security guard at a kibbutz uh, in southern uh, Israel at the time of October 7th. And he, he was uh, taken as a hostage along with about uh, five other Bedouin hostages. So in other words, he was the first person rescued underground, you know, the first Arab. What's really astonishing is this, Charles. Uh, you had um, an Israeli a special ops team basically methodically you know going through the tunnel system in southern gaza they found a tunnel shaft and they were basically looking for hamas operatives and uh, all of a sudden they come across a single person who's by himself in a room uh we're getting reports as we speak charles because it's, it's the lead story here in tel aviv and israel where i am charles and he heard voices speaking is hebrew in another room or location and he shouted out in a Hebrew, Charles. And uh, that's when they knew they had a potential hostage. He was found alone. Apparently, his captors, charge, Charles, had abandoned him. And that's why they were rescuing him. This was also the first uh, hostage rescue operation where there were no civilian casualties. He's now in a hospital in Israel. Uh, he's with his family. Family members were shocked to see his condition. He lost about 20 kilograms of weight. That's about 40 pounds of weight. Uh, and he was severely malnourished. He was unable to even uh, come climb out of a tunnel shaft because he was about 25 yards or or so kept underground. He said he was kept, um, you know, sometimes 24 hours with sleep, without sleep. And when he spoke with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Charles, you saw that video message you just uh, showed a moment ago. He also told the Prime Minister this. He said, listen, there are others waiting for you and they're going through endless suffering. So out of those 108 hostages, which are still you know, officially hostages, at least 40 of them, Charles, are believed to be dead. And um, Carl, there is still the conviction, isn't there, amongst the families of the hostages that the best way to get them out is to agree a ceasefire and hostage release deal. But we don't really see too much progress towards that at the moment, do we? No, Charles, and you, that's the whole problem right now. We're at a stalemate, we're at a deadlock, we're at a dead end. In other words, after 10 months, almost we're in the 11th month of the war now, only eight hostages have been rescued alive, all right? You have maybe 40 or so, probably, presumably dead at least. And as far as the remainder, uh, basically, it reduces to the fact that it depends on two men, Benjamin Netanyahu and Yahweh Sinwar. And you have two, uh, uh, you know, uh, incompatible, contradicting uh, goals. Uh, the, the Israelis, uh, they don't want to agree to a deal uh, without leaving kind of presence on the border with, with Egypt, because that's where the tunnel system is that allowed Hamas to uh, send fighters and uh, weapons and such and fuel, those kinds of things. They want a presence there. Uh, uh, Hamas force, part Yahweh Sinwar, they want uh, to a permanent withdrawal of Israel. They want to say, okay, you know, we'll release some hostages after six weeks, but that's it. Israel cannot return to the fighting. That's Hamas saying that they want a future role uh, for Hamas in a post-war Gaza. That's a, that's a non-starter for for uh, for Israel as far as they're concerned. That's why you have this deadlock and that's why you have this tension because you've got families uh, in, in, in Israel saying, in the public saying, do whatever it takes to get the remaining hostages out and then maybe go back to war. I mean, 21% uh, of, uh, of, the, of the public here are, are saying that, you know, do whatever it takes uh, to get the hostages out. And another 23% are saying that, um, you know, if we have to go longer, fine. 
Uh, meanwhile, uh, according to the United Nations, only about 11% of the entire Gaza Strip is not covered by Israeli evacuation orders. And we've heard from other humanitarian workers that there is no safe place in Gaza. But what are the Israelis saying? I mean, are there, are there still any safe zones in Gaza that people can go to? Charles, there's really no place. I mean, listen, since last Friday, Charles, there have been three evacuation orders. For the month of August, Charles, there have been 16 overall. So if you're trying to do a massive rollout of vaccines, you have more than a million doses, you need to, you know, <clears throat> vaccinate at least 640,000 children, Charles. Uh, those are children under the age of 10. You've got 50,000 new babies who've been born since the war began in October. And how can you possibly, you know, get to the aid, uh, get to these uh, doses, which have now been, you know, taken into Gaza? How can you get to them? How can you distribute them? They're saying that the roads are not safe. Uh, there's a risk of, of robberies uh, and, and fighting along the way. That's why they've paused it. It's a humanitarian, if not disaster catastrophe. 640,000 people, Charles, that's almost a quarter of the population. Keep in mind, the Gaza Strip is only a quarter the size of Abuja where you are. And the area we're talking about is an eighth the size of Abuja. Carl, thank you very much indeed. Carl Bostic is our special correspondent. He was talking to me on the line from Tel Aviv.